I'd like to now introduce our next speaker, our commencement speaker, Mr. Gaston Pavlovich. Gaston is a graduate of the class of 1987. He is a filmmaker, economist, and entrepreneur who founded Fabrica de Cine in, 2000, in 2013, which is an international production company based in Mexico City. Since its inception, Fabrica de Cine has produced 14 films filmed across four continents, financing or co-financing all of the titles. Gaston has been the only Latin American to have produced in four continents and in five languages. Gaston teamed with director Martin Scorsese on two films, most recently The Irishman, starring Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci, which received 12 Oscar nominations. Other recent projects included The Professor and the Madman, starring Mel Gibson and Sean Penn, and Hologram for the King, starring Tom Hanks. Currently serving as the chairman of the board and overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of Fabrica de Cine, Gaston always is working hard to develop further film, television, and streaming projects for the international market. Gaston currently resides in Hermosillo, Mexico, and is a very proud Villanova alumni. Let us give a warm welcome to Mr. Gaston Pavlovich. Thank you, Headmaster Brian, faculty, um, my Villanova world, thank you for this honor, this privilege. I am overwhelmed and humbled by your invitation and to come back to this place which has meant so much to me. Alumni of 1987 slept in that room right there and sat where you're sitting right there. Uh, and uh, first of all, really want to congratulate you for this great achievement that you probably don't realize how great it is that you've achieved today, graduating from Villanova. And I'd like to also congratulate your parents, because you will someday realize the sacrifice and effort they made for you to achieve what you achieved. So first of all, congratulations on that. And I don't know you much at all, perhaps, and I'm already very proud of you, and I'm already part of this great alumni, Villanova family. When I, right before I came to Villanova, I was a mess. I was going nowhere fast. And, you know, my parents smartly said, you're smarter than that. We're going to send you to Villanova. I didn't know what that meant. I came here. The first thing I realized that we were not going to watch TV for three years. We had TV back then. And I said, there's no TV here. There's no TV. You're not going to watch TV here. Well, where's the TV? There's no TV. And so I thought I was going to go bonkers for that. And that was probably one of the best things that happened to me, that I was not watching TV for three years. I ended up having to relate to people to have conversations with my, you know, for example, my first roommate was from Taiwan. I didn't even know where Taiwan was, you know? So I, that was my first great conversation. And then I started meeting other people. And I started growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually. That chapel right there, you have no idea how many hours I spent in that chapel. I'm so appreciative of it. And then I started meeting the teachers. You know, right before Villanova, I had no conversations, no communication with the teachers. As of Villanova, they started talking to me. That was so strange. They started letting me ask my dumb questions. They were patient with me. And they became, they, I realized what a teacher was. And I must uh, talk about how specifically two teachers actually influenced me in a very, very powerful way throughout my entire life. And I'm saying this because look at that faculty now you will want to talk to them throughout your journey in your life. You will want to come back and ask them more questions. You will want to stay in touch. And may, maybe you hated a couple of them, that's fine, it happens. <laughs> but you will realize how appreciative you are of what they told you and what happened. So I all of a sudden started having conversations about civics and politics and history, something I never thought that would happen. 
And I ended up making my decision as a career at my university because of that teacher and because of that class. That was Mr. Snively. He was a legend back then, he's still a legend now. We called him the Snive. <laughs> he was too cool. And we stayed in touch till today. And um, the next teacher, all of a sudden I walk into a literature class. And this teacher starts getting me engaged with literature and I fall in love with literature. I come from a ranch. And I started falling in love with literature. If you're a filmmaker, as I am, or a producer, you better know literature. You better know some stuff about literature. Because the, the storytellers, we are storytellers. We are the modern storytellers. And forever, I will be as well grateful with Mr. Tim Bunce for helping me fall in love with something I never thought I would fall in love with. Mr. Bunce, uh, I was overwhelmed with blessings and gratefulness when I saw Mr. Snively and Mr. Bunce here in this campus today. And I hope you have that kind of relationships years from now with this faculty right now. Mr. Schneidley and Mr. Bunce, you strongly influenced my life. You probably saved me. Thank you for that from the bottom of my heart. I <laughs> bottom line, Villanova woke me up and I started to realize what was happening. I was developing character. I didn't have it before that. And I was developing character, discipline, education, reflection, spirituality, all in one, that's character. I didn't realize how important that was going to be. But character is not loud. It's not something like you foam in the mouth and you scream out and you know, I'm all tough and I'm all, this is character. No, 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 no. That's, that's TV lying to you again. Character is silent. It's that silent virtue, that silent fight. Thank you for the song. That silent climb that you're going through day by day. It's that effort that you're going to to make yourself a better person day by day. And I call it now Villanova character. Because fast forward, 30 years later, I've become a filmmaker and I'm sitting down all of a sudden, very unexpectedly, in the den of one of the most important directors of all time, Martin Scorsese. And he's talking to me about a film that he wants me to produce, but I'm a candidate. He's interviewing me at his house, one-on-one. -on -one. The reason he was interviewing me is because he had a project, a passion project, which Hollywood didn't want to make for him. Him, one of the best and most reward awarded uh, directors of all time. The, the Wolf of Wall Street, Taxi Driver, Goodfellas. Hollywood loved him and yet they didn't want to make the only project he wanted to make. It was called Silence. It's based on a very important literature, piece of literature from Japan, from a very important writer called Shusoku Endo. And Silence is about faith going through fire. It's about priests going into Japan in the 17th century and trying to evangelize the Japanese culture. It's as powerful and as a dramatic true story as you can imagine. It's faith under fire. He wanted to make that. Hollywood, Hollywood doesn't like that. There's no sex, drugs, and rock and roll in that. It's boring. So he had to go outside of Hollywood and outside of the United States to find a producer to jump on board with him. So I sat down with him at a very important conversation. And I was very prepared, you know, how we're gonna do the production plan and the budget, how we're gonna sell the film. He didn't ask me any of those things. He asked me about my values. He asked me about my beliefs. He asked me about who I was. Where was I educated? What was I formed? What did my parents do? That kind of conversation. I realized he was asking me about my character. Will you have enough inside of you to make my passion project come through? That's what he was asking for. So I responded as best I could, seeing him eye to eye, telling him exactly who I was. Went to bed the next morning, his lawyer called me up. He said, come over to my office immediately. This is in New York. I don't know if any of you saw Goodfellas. Those characters that you see in Goodfellas, that's his lawyer. 
<laughs> that's exactly how his lawyer is. That's exactly the kind of people he surrounds himself with. That's Martin Scorsese. Well, his lawyer's all, you know, tough and broken on me, and he said, well, I don't know what happened last night, but Marty wants to go with you as a producer. I don't even know who you are. But I'll tell you one thing. If you make this happen for Marty, you will have one of the most powerful allies in Hollywood because there's so many producers that have tried and not made it. But if you fail, I will make sure you will never work in Hollywood for the rest of your bleeping life. And he did not say bleeping. True story. I looked him in the eye. I said two things. One, I'll make this film. I'll finish it. I'll make Marty proud. Two, you will never threaten me in your bleeping life again. <laughs> I want his respect and I want Martin Scorsese's respect. At the end of the day, it was an amazing journey. We filmed in Taiwan. So many things happened. Hollywood was asking, who the heck is this guy? They made this film 28 years in the making. And it's an extraordinary film. We got nominated for a couple of Oscars, but it was just an extraordinary achievement in so many ways. And I realized, Damn, that Villanova character thing kicked in. That honestly helped. In appreciation of what I did for Silence, because nobody else wanted to do it, Marty said, I'll, I'll give you my next film. You will, be, you will produce it. And it's called The Irishman. But you have to convince Robert De Niro as well, because it's also his project. It's more his project than mine. So you have dinner with him tomorrow at his house. Go to New York. Now you have to have that talk with him. Same thing. Bob, thank you, I call him Bob. That's flattery. Bob did not ask me about the budget, did not ask me about the structure, did not ask me any technicalities. He asked me about who I was, what I believed in, how I was going to make this project work, which, by the way, was four times more expensive and bigger than silence in its weight, so it's bigger. And the same responses and the same thing. The next day I woke up and there's a message on my phone from Marty Scorsese's assistant saying, Congratulations, Bob says, let's go with Gaston. We made the film, uh, went through heck and hell and everything to make it, just like silence. Finally made it, finally sold it to Netflix. 12 nominations, and millions of people saw it. I'm very proud of that. But it wasn't the red carpet, and it wasn't that whole glittery thing. It was the achievement. It was realizing that if I hadn't, honest, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, if I hadn't gone through Villanova, I would not have been doing anything remotely similar to that. My Villanova pride, my Villanova character kicked in. All of those conversations with these guys kicked in. Because, all, because Villanova character is also the power of humbleness. It's the power of love. It's the power of personal achievement. Again, it's silent. So that's where we are right now. I don't think you guys realize, and I hope you do, that you're now covered in Villanova character. You're now carrying this. And Villanova character means that if you fall down 100 times, you will get up 101 times. That's just what it is. Because you will fall down. We all do. We still do. And you will get up. And every mistake you make, and you will make mistakes, you will develop other characters knowing that th that's just experience. You learn something new. You go forward. With the other character, you will achieve. You will be great with your family, with your friends, with your society, and with your work. Congratulations on achieving that. Hug your parents. Thank them for their assistance in that. Hug your teachers. Thank them for their assistance in that. And make, may your journey be as fruitful and as blessed as most of us who have graduated from Villanova, including my best friends who graduated with me over there, Doug Neary and Ken Clough. They, uh, they came by to uh, accompany me here, and, and we're just discovering so many things, some secret things that we were doing here in Villanova that we just <laughs> didn't talk to about it. I'm not, you know, better not tell. But so I hope you I hope you guys have that kind of relationship as I still do with my with my BFFs from that time. Blessed all of you. Congratulations. Thank you very much for inviting me.